This video was meant to demonstrate how to install a solid state drive in a HP Pavilion uh, 23 uh, model 12-H029 all-in-one touchscreen PC. Um, I've never worked on this particular model of all-in-one before, uh, so we'll, let's just dive right in. I'm guessing that we need to flip it onto its face and find any screws. I see two already. Now this particular all-in-one is interesting. Um, looks like it has four USB 2.0 um, RJ45 Ethernet port. There is the power plug. Uh, it looks like a audio and probably mic input right here. Um, we have at least one USB 3.0 SD card reader. Oh, there's the mic and headphone jack in. Maybe that's an auxiliary port of sorts. Not really too sure. And we have the optical drive over here. Um, one thing I think this all-in-one is lacking is external video output for dual monitors. I've got a Dell Optiplex 9030 all-in-one running in my living room and I can connect that to my TV via the HDMI out and it's actually quite nice. So it looks like we have a screw on either end of the back assembly here. We got one here and one here. Let's start by taking those out. Let's just try gently lifting up. Oh, there we go. Just like the back of a laptop. A little bit dusty. There you go, two screws. And I'm seeing some, a little bit of dust in the heat sink fan there. I am seeing the hard drive here, it's interesting. It looks like it is a 3.5 inch hard drive. Um, we'll have to take a better look at that uh, right now, actually. Why not? So there's a screw on the other end here. I won't move the camera, it's pretty obvious. You'll see it. Let's see if that's the only one we need to remove for this hard drive uh, chassis here. Okay, and then it looks like we move this down. Okay, easy. I see the SATA connection is right here. So it looks like we might have to use some, uh, you can either use double-sided tape. Um, I think I might even use a zip tie. I might. I don't have any double-sided tape at the moment, but through these little air holes here, um, maybe I'll feed a zip tie through there and fasten the solid state drive down here. Because unless I'm able to uh, utilize one of these screws in the hard drive uh, chassis here to hold the solid state drive in, we'll try that out too. So that's pretty easy to open. That's a good thing. Let's do a little bit of a quick tour here. As you can see, we do have that fan and it was actually connected right beside the hard drive. It's like feeding into the hard drive. There's like a vent right here. So that's cool, I guess. Um, the heat sink was of course right here. So we have one circuit board here with a few uh, ribbon cables attached. Optical drive, um, USB over here, perhaps that's the motherboard. Let's take a quick look. I'm seeing two RAM slot uh, markings on this metal casing here. Let's open that up and see what's inside. So there's a screw here, and a screw here, a screw here, and 
I think that's it. Let's take a look. I'm guessing that's where the motherboard is. Okay, these screws come all the way out. Now we get to find out if we have laptop style RAM on this motherboard or if we have regular size desktop RAM. That might be good to know before you open this thing up or if you want to uh, replace or upgrade. Okay, so let's gently feel around and try to figure out how to take this thing off. Uh, okay. I don't know. There we go. Just gently lift up from here and I believe pull down this way because there's two latches over here that you can't see. Okay. Yes, it is a laptop style um, RAM. And there's the CPU. So there's another cool aspect of this. Um, this is running a fourth generation i5, I want to say i5 4590T CPU. Uh, not the greatest in terms of like performance. Definitely lower power. It's only dual core, not quad core. And I believe the clock speed is... Well, I'll look it up really quick. Well, I'll look it up later when we set up Windows 10 again. I'm not really too sure what CPU that is. Uh, well, then again, since we're here, maybe we can take a look and even repaste the CPU to see if it needs any attention. So it looks like we have two... 4 gigabyte, 1600 megahertz RAM, uh, Micron RAM. There's nothing wrong with that. There's our Wi Fi card. And yeah, let's take a look at the CPU. It looks like I need a Torx screw. Okay, my Torx screw is downstairs, so I'm going to take this thing and blow the dust out and bring my screwdriver back up. All right, so this thing's all blown out and fairly clean. It wasn't really that dirty to begin with, to be honest. Um, let's take the hard drive out of this chassis and see if we can't fit um, the solid state drive in. And I will get that, you know what, let's get that torque screwdriver. Okay, let's get this hard drive out. It has a one terabyte Western Western Digital Blue PC hard drive. Um, not bad. That'll work really well as an extra storage drive. Otherwise, it was slowing down and uh, needed a reset for Windows to um, run smooth again. Okay, so since we have Micron RAM here, uh, just for fun, I'm going to try to... Let's try out this uh, Micron 1100 2.5 inch 256 gigabyte SATA 3 uh, solid state drive. And let's see if we can't fit it on the chassis, on the hard drive chassis. First, I just want to have a take a look at what the fit's like. Okay, nice. Um, my thoughts were to maybe screw it in there and have it fit. And then that can just be its permanent resting place. Uh, I don't know. I don't think that's going to work. It's kind of sitting a little bit too far up. I think I'm just going to use a zip tie. Alright, let's get a better look here. So we have these handy little air holes. So I'm going to feed the zip, zip tie through here. And 
will come out right over here. Okay, we'll make a nice snug little resting spot for this SSD. I'll plug that in. Tie it up. Okay, get some pliers. One second. Okay, that feels pretty good to me. Awesome. And just for show, let's put this thing back on. Now let's take a look at the CPU. Okay, to be able to take the heat sink off the CPU, you'll need a Torx screw. So it really helps to have a mini screwdriver set. So we'll start off with this one. Jump across. Over here. And right here. Ooh, that's pretty pasty. I think I'm going to clean that up. Just for reference, there's one more Torx screw over here, right behind this fan on the heat sink, and we'll have to take that out to remove the heat sink. Screw is right here. Let's get that out. I should have taken that out before I uh, blew the dust out, to be honest, but that's okay. Just gonna have to live with that. All right, let's uh, take another look at the CPU. Yeah, the... To be honest, the thermal paste is kind of gunked on here. It's fine, but I think I'm going to clean it up and um, take a look at what CPU we're working with. Because I totally forget. Ooh. Yeah, that's pretty gooey. <laughs> right? So it helps to have something like a microfiber cloth. You know, in Canada you can buy a bunch of these in Costco for a pretty good deal. See the Kirkland brand? Uh, not sponsored by the way. So, and some isopropyl alcohol will really help. So, just gonna grab this. And let's clean off the heat sink first. Yeah, that's looking pretty nice. Let's give that CPU some love now. In this case, I'm kind of glad that the pins for the CPU socket are on the motherboard and not on the back of the CPU because some of that thermal paste got on the back of the CPU there for a moment. I don't know if he caught that. Um, I hate it when that happens. It just turns the job into such a particular pain in the butt process. To take like a little needle or like a toothpick and clean off the between the rows of uh, CPU pins is uh, not something I like to do. So for future reference, maybe don't uh, treat thermal paste like birthday cake icing. 
because somebody like me is gonna come and be disappointed in you. It really wasn't that bad. I'm just saying. Intel Core i5 4570T CPU clocking in at 2.9 gigahertz. Uh, again, I did look at Task Manager and Device Manager before taking this thing apart and removing the hard drive. I do remember it said dual core, four threads. Um, so what I'm guessing is this is just like a kind of like a laptop style i5 CPU where it's just like a little more energy efficient um, and potentially not that great for heavy loads which to be honest uh, the all-in-one style of PC is more for the average consumer based on its um, the inability to really do upgrades or uh, scratch the uh, tech enthusiast itch beyond just taking it apart and doing some general maintenance like this. You know, I'm not going to do anything with this all-in-one myself. I'll, I'm just refurbishing it and putting it back out to the world. Uh, and somebody will use it, and that's totally cool. There's nothing wrong with it. It just doesn't suit my needs, that's all. Um, I did mention that I have the Dell Optiflex 9030 all-in-one running in my living room, but that is kind of uh, a little more fun because I have an animated wallpaper on the desktop and while it's connected to my TV I have a, a cool little animation going on on the side. It just reminds me of like some kind of a futuristic cyber cafe or something in a movie. It's kind of fun to have. Man that CPU pace was super sloppy and I'm so unhappy about that. Let's just get this thing back in and forget about it. All right, what pace do I have over here? I think it's thermal take. Yeah, thermal take uh, TG-7. Just something I picked up at Best Buy. Um, because I think my local computer shop, one of the three, uh, maybe they were all out, I don't know. Usually I'd buy from there. Got a couple of strips going here. That's pretty ugly too. <laughs> but that's okay, out of sight, out of mind. As I stood there complaining about the sloppy mess of thermal paste, I probably just created a brand new one right there. Um Yeah, whatever. I think that'll be just fine. All right, back in. All right, let's put this uh, metal shield back on.
Okay, we are ready to install Windows 10. Let me go get my USB. Okay, I've got my Windows 10 USB. Put this into the USB port there. Um, all right, I've got this USB powered keyboard and mouse. Hopefully it'll just work. Let's find out. All right. I'm not even sure where the power button is on this thing. Let's take a look around. Here it is, right up here. Okay, I think it's booted on. Okay, so the computer was not booting on, and just in case this happens to you, uh, here's my solution. Um, so what was happening with me, uh, the computer was booting on, the fan was spinning, stopping, spinning, stopping, and the LED on the power button was flashing. Um, and this would happen in a pattern until I just shut off and so what I, I did a lot of things like reseat the RAM, reseat the CPU, check connections, etc. Uh, reseat the solid state drive. And what turned out to be the problem was the RAM. So unfortunately, somewhere along the way or just randomly uh, right now, um, the bottom RAM slot, so this, oops. This is the top one right here, the white one, and the bottom black one here uh, doesn't seem to be working anymore. It did prior to uh, me opening this thing up, um, installing the SSD, etc. Uh, but for some reason it doesn't anymore, which is a shame. Um, so previously I had two 4 gigabyte uh, DDR3 1600 megahertz micron um, RAM sticks installed, and now I have one eight gigabyte uh, Samsung 1600 megahertz uh, DDR3 RAM stick installed. So I've got to use my one remaining eight gigabyte stick in this. Um, I have confirmed that in many different configurations and different sets of RAM that I do no work. Uh, nothing did work for this except for a single channel solution. Um, and the Micron RAM I just installed in a different ThinkPad laptop. So, unfortunately, that seems to be the reality right now. Um, if you're watching this and you did have a similar problem and you came to a different solution, let me know. Um, I can't find anything online and I don't really want to spend too much more time on it. So, reluctantly, I will call this job complete. And... Let's put it back together and boot it back on. Uh, I already installed Windows 10 and it runs actually pretty well. Uh, the touch screen is intuitive and works very well. And overall, I mean the uh, slower CPU is not great, but honestly, I didn't have too many big expectations. So anyway, this time lapse this part.
Okay, as you can see, it's working just fine. I have a uh, wireless USB and mouse connected right now to a USB port. Um, as you can see, the touch screen works pretty well. It's not bad at all. So yeah, that's it. Um, I just wanted to demonstrate that Windows 10 is up and running and it looks pretty good. I actually really like this uh, desktop that um, loaded on its own. It's kind of uh, a little bit different than the usual bright blue that I'm used to seeing. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, but anyways, yeah, um, I'm happy that it's working. Um, you know, one thing that I wish this all-in-one had was a display output. It's one thing like sorely missing, unfortunately, from this. I guess you could try uh, like running a USB to a VGA or USB to HDMI, etc. for a second display, but the image quality might suffer. And I don't know, not having the audio option readily available is kind of a bummer too without running a series of cable adapters, uh, upgradable options. So anyways, I'll stop ranting and I'll end this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Hopefully you learned something and yeah, here's the all in one. Give me a shout in the comments if you have any feedback or if you have any suggestions, uh, stuff like that. Otherwise have a great day and thank you. This is a video showcasing the HP Pavilion 2 3 H029 all-in-one desktop PC for use in 2021 and onward. As you can see, I installed Windows 10 64-bit onto this machine. Previously, it was manufactured to run Windows 8, being with all the touchscreen capabilities. Here's a look at the side. As you can see, there is a optical drive. Um, it's a fairly slick looking machine. There's nothing quite wrong with this at all. It functions quite well. And as you can see, there's a USB mouse and keyboard. We have a SD card reader, USB 3.0, USB 2.0, um, mic and headphone jack. We have four times USB 2.0, another audio port, RJ45 ethernet port, and there's the power plug for the power adapter. We have an Intel Core i5-4570T CPU dual core for thread, 2.9 gigahertz, not bad. Uh, eight gigabytes of 1600 megahertz Samsung RAM. We have a Micron 256 gigabyte uh, SATA 3 SSD, and it has integrated Intel HD Graphics 4600, as we'll showcase later. So, here's an example of the 720p webcam. Nothing too exceptional, but standard fare for this type of device. Not too bad at all. And it's got things like a, a fast SSD boot. Um, you can get to scrolling through videos on YouTube quite quickly. Uh, the response is quite great with the SSD and the RAM upgrade. Your experience, generally speaking, should be seamless. As long as you have a good internet connection, you should be able to browse YouTube easily, play videos in HD, 1080p quality, and generally have an all right time. Watch all your tech videos, such as all of mine, all of the Haste Repair Group videos. Very informative. So you can also use the optical drive to load DVDs or software, uh, perhaps games as well. And you can spend some time watching uh, music DVDs or movies or anything you like. Here we have a DVD of the Japanese band called Envy. I'm not sure I've actually watched all the way through. Maybe once. Excellent band. 
So you can do this, you can multitask at the same time, have the video playing on one side of the screen, maybe doing a Word document on the other side of the screen. And you can utilize the touch screen as well for that. Um, here I have LibreOffice work. Excuse me, I have LibreOffice loaded up for all your word processing needs. And this is compatible with all Office products, Microsoft Office that is. So onto the games. I thought I'd demonstrate some of the touchscreen. Um, you can play chess. This is Simply Chess off of Steam. I believe it might be a free download. If you like chess and playing online or playing against the computer, this is great. And this is a game called Polybridge. So this can also use the uh, touchscreen for this. Um, it can switch back and forth between mouse and keyboard as well. And it's actually a pretty good experience. And I thought I'd give a game like Counter-Strike um, a go as well, a CS Go. You can download this off of Steam as well. Um, so I had this game running fairly well. I wouldn't expect to have an awesome experience playing competitively, but just for fun, it's not too bad at all if you turn the settings down low. So hopefully this video helped you make a decision on if this desktop is the right purchase for you. It's pretty good for 2021 and onward, and yeah, thanks a lot for watching. Leave me some feedback in the comments. Have a nice day.